vlog number two. Art is a small word, but can have different interpretations for everyone. Melbourne has a thriving art scene, especially that of street art, which attracts not only tourists, but locals also. Street art is predominantly legal in the city and inner city suburbs, if artists have permission from the owners of the buildings that they're working on. It's embedded in our culture, just like coffee is for us and can be seen everywhere. It's always evolving in Melbourne as the alleyways, secret lanes and murals are constantly changing. I like to compartmentalize Melbourne's street art into three categories. Each aspect has an underlining motive behind it that the art or the artist is trying to project. Number one, the reality of the world. Political issues, ads, and any form of entertainment come under this element. It's what society feels important in the modern age that inspires Melbourne street artists to use the artistic skills to portray these aspects thoroughly. This example can be found walking out of Melbourne Central's Swanson Street exit. It can be upcoming movie promos or ads by companies that's visible when walking out of one of the busiest stations in Melbourne, as the promos are painted meticulously. Coming back to controversial murals, Hoysia Lane is an amazing place to visit. So I'm at Hoysia Lane right now and this is Melbourne's biggest and most busiest art alleyway and it's packed today. The mural of Egg Boy was painted in Hoysia Lane, which shined the ongoing issue of racism by Australian politicians, depicts again the reality of the world, and we see the boy who cracked an egg on Fraser Anning's head hailed as a hero. Unfortunately, the mural was painted over three times with white paint by supporters of Anning. Eventually, the mural was painted again by anti-racist activists saying, no room for racism. Anyway, Hoysia Lane is an awesome place to visit while there are other remarkable pieces of graffiti still there. Number two the reality of other people. This is where street art gets interesting. This element is very personal. Melbournians use this aspect to really express themselves. Advertising the next movie or a business really does not matter here. When you look at this kind of art, you are looking at the reality of the person who made it. Whoever it is, he or she is trying to convey their ideologies to the world. These kinds of artworks don't always have to be huge as some murals are and they are minuscule in nature. The reality might not be pleasant also, like some, it can be dark and thought provoking. If you really want a taste of this reality, then head over to Pressgrave Place. It's a hidden alleyway located behind the 30 mil coffee shop. So this is one of my favorite places in the city. It's called Pressgrave Place. A friend showed me this a couple of years ago and every time I come to the city and I really want to look at art, I always come here. It's full of peculiar artwork everywhere and people just come and hang in their own artwork. Man, I love this city. Number three, the reality of yourself. Art has the power to take you out of yourself from reality. From endless cycles of thoughts and worries, it has the ability to bring you to the present moment, which is a difficult trance to achieve. It can evoke emotions of such that push us into deep thought. A place I really like to come to enter this reality is Croft Alley. So I'm at Croft Alley now, this place is a bit hard to find but once you do there's a hidden bar located in the corner of the alley and this whole place is covered with street art on the wall. This claustrophobic alley can overwhelm you. You can either be lost in thought or be completely present. I'm so tired, my legs are dead from walking so much today, but it was worth every moment. Melbourne has such an amazing art scene. It's peculiar, eccentric, and just so intricate at the same time. But you can just get lost in all these different realities, depending on who painted it, why it was painted, or if it's just randomly there by some random person. I wanna thank everyone who's been watching my videos and subscribing and liking and sharing. You guys are awesome, you guys know who you are. I have so much fun making these vlogs slash videos and it's just such a fun experience. Finally, I will be talking about some notable mentions that I didn't talk about in the start of the video. Make sure to keep watching. If you're new to Melbourne or if you've been living in Melbourne for a few years now and you know someone who likes art or if you like art, you should just go and visit these places. Thanks guys.
Peeking around the corner from Chinatown's hustle and bustle doesn't do Tattersall's Lane justice. You need to stroll down this narrow alleyway to discover some great street art and a cool bar. When it comes to uptown vibes, street cool and old school grime, Duckport Place is the place to go. Covered head to toe in street art and gig posters, the lane is home to innovative Chinese eatery, the Indian inspired flavours of Tonka, a Danish steakhouse and a wine bar. Walking through Duckboard Place, you'll stumble upon ACDC Lane. Named after the Australian musical heroes, ACDC Lane is the physical embodiment of Melbourne's love affair with down and dirty rock and roll. Finally, take a stroll down Myers Place, one of Melbourne's oldest alleyways. Selected as one of the pilot projects for the city's new Green Your Laneways campaign, the laneways grey walls were brought to life by amazing green galleries. Again guys, thank you so much for watching my video. Make sure to like, subscribe and share it with your friends. This is part one of three of the Melbourne CBD series. I'm excited for everyone to see what's coming up in the future. Melbourne is an amazing city. There's so many things to do. So make sure to check these places out if you haven't. Or I hope this video gave you some perspective if you have checked these places out. And maybe now you look at it from a different point of view. Take your friends, go alone. Enjoy.